All right, all right. How you doing? So, I was asked, well, I wasn't asked, I did a poll. Deno, Node versus Bun.js. These are three JavaScript runtimes. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the details about the three, and I'm gonna inject my uh, decades of nerd experience into the whole, uh, into whole discussion. So if you don't know, JavaScript is the most, the most popular programming language out there today. Love it or hate it, that's just the case. That's largely because JavaScript is the only game in town when it comes to browser development that is uh, often called client-side development. It's all web stuff. JavaScript is used also on the server. That's where Node, Deno, and Bun come in. And uh, yeah, so it's everywhere. Anyway, so in this video, as I said, we're gonna look at Node, Deno, and Bun. We're gonna compare and contrast them, and I'm gonna give you my opinion about the three technologies from the point of view of somebody who's been doing this for decades. All right, let's go get some coffee. So this is the new coder in a car car. I got rid of the old Audi because uh, though I love that car, it kept messing up on me. Anyhow, that's it. Time to get a bagel. Node versus Deno versus Bun. These are JavaScript runtimes. I'll just give you the bullet points and I'll give you my opinions as we go. Node, developed in 2009. Node.js is a popular JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 engine. It's known for its package manager, NPM, vast library of modules, and wide adoption in server-side applications. Node.js uses common JS module system. Node's strength is also its um, Achilles heel. Uh, the vast collection of modules can be filled with landmines. And Node famously, your applications can break if somebody updates a module somewhere and messes up your application. So you have to be very selective with the modules that you uh, utilize in your project. Although I know that somebody have mentioned that you can now lock down things with Node, which is good. But that all said, the founder of Node was so disgusted with Node, I guess you'd say, he decided to start something called Deno. Deno created by the original creator of Node. Deno emerged in 2018 with a focus on security, leveraging TypeScript by default. TypeScript is just basically uh, strongly typed JavaScript. So Deno uses a more modern approach to module management. Deno uses ES modules and emphasizes security by default approach, requiring explicit permissions for file network and environmental access. Environment access. That's interesting. So if Deno, which was created in response to Node's weaknesses by the uh, creator of Node, if it uh, emphasizes security by default approach, that would suggest that by default, Node isn't secure. <laughs> this is kind of funny because a lot of Node developers criticize PHP because they say PHP is not secure. <laughs> well, they're right. Old PHP, PHP 3, 4 to a lesser extent, this is like really a 15-year-old, 20-year-old PHP. Or, yeah, that wasn't secure. And they did it on purpose because they wanted to make it easy for people to put out stuff. It worked. It made PHP very, very, very popular. It's it's to it's to this day. You know, we're late November 2023. Today, last time I checked stats, PHP is still far and away the most popular server-side programming language. Yes, yeah, big part of it is because of content management systems like WordPress, Drupal. But nonetheless, it's very, very widely used. So that's an ironic thing about uh, Node given their harsh criticisms of PHP's loosey-goosey, well, old PHP's loosey-goosey uh, architecture. But that's, by the way, PHP is no longer like that. You know, PHP is pretty locked down, especially 7 and 8. 
Come on. So anyway, the last one is Bun Browser Unified by Node. Bun is a newer project that aims to bring browser APIs into Node.js, allowing developers to use web platform APIs within Node. It's an attempt to unify the JavaScript environments of browsers and Node.js, enabling seamless compatibility between browser and server code. Each has its strengths. Node, Node has a vast ecosystem of community support. Dano emphasizes security and modern practices, while Bun is an innovative project aiming to bridge the gap between browser and server environments. Uh, the choice often depends on specific project needs and developer preferences for features like security, ease of use, and ecosystem maturity. Uh, Mr. ChatGPT is right about that. There's also another aspect that ChatGPT doesn't talk about, and that is um, use case, you know? I guess he did, did he just, did ChatGPT just said use case? Uh, no, it didn't suggest that. Yeah, use case is an issue, so that's what well, suggests that. But the other issue is jobs. So if you're looking to get a job, yeah, I'm pretty sure for every uh, bun job, there's probably 10,000 node jobs. You know, I would say a similar number with uh, Denim. I would imagine that node is far, far more popular than Deno. That seems to be a likely uh, situation, right? So, yeah, if you're interested in jobs, I would say jump into node if you want to do the JavaScript thing. On the other hand, if you are a nerdpreneur or an aspiring nerdpreneur, you're looking to develop your own software, web-based, of course, then I would look at all three briefly. See, so one of the jobs as of, of a professional developer is just to be aware of what's out there. It doesn't mean you have to learn everything because then you'll never get any work done. You want to do most of your learning while building stuff, while being paid, especially in the first four years of your career. That's normal. You get your fundamentals down, and then you'll be ready to go and learn anything pretty quickly. So anyway, if I was looking to build a SaaS product, I would evaluate each technology just very quickly, see how, how they felt. And so you understand basically what their strengths are, what your preferences are. And then given the particular project you might develop, then you'll know which is best, you know. If I was a business owner, would I jump on Bun right now? Mm, I would have to do a bit more research to see how uh, how popular it's getting. The worst thing you can do is find yourself leveraging a technology that dies. That happens often. Happened to me. I got caught. So I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys to get caught. Anyway, so there you go. If you're trying to compare Node, Bun, and uh, uh, Deno, now you understand. Knows the most mature, most jobs, large, huge collection of modules, big ecosystem, big, uh, lots of support because a lot of people are doing Node. On the other hand, Node is a double-edged sword. That ecosystem is filled with landmines, so you have to be very careful about what you do. Then, on the other hand, is a much more secure implementation. Everything's locked down by default, so that's cool. Less chance of major catastrophe in that situation. And I don't see Bun necessarily as a competitor, although when it was first presented to me, they kind of presented it as a competitor to these technologies. Maybe I misinterpreted what somebody said. It's something that works alongside with Node, bringing a client-side browser capability on the server. You know, what did he mention? Uh, DOM manipulation, uh, web sockets, local storage. What was it? Yeah. DOM manipulation, fetch API, enabling the fetching of resources such as, such as making HTTP requests using the same interface available in web browsers. Facilitating network requests from server-side code. Yeah, so open up, uh, what do we used to call that? I forget now. Anyway, then you got web storage, providing access to client-side storage mechanisms like local storage, session storage, allowing Node.js applications to utilize similar storage capabilities. Web workers, that's threading. Canvas API, that's really interesting. Drawing on screen. See, I'm not sure about that. I would have to see the specific DOM bun impl implementation, rather. Because, you know, a lot of this stuff, like especially Canvas and DOM manipulation, that's client-side stuff. As a general rule, I don't like mi mixing up my client-side code with the server-side. 
but it could be useful in certain circumstances, no doubt. Anyway, that's it. There's a the story. Now you know what I would do. Uh, you can decide what you're going to do. In the end, the more you learn, the more you earn. You can't lose. You can't really pick a bad technology uh, in terms of when you're dabbling and learning things. Last bit, bit of advice. Don't get caught up in tutorial hell. Always trying to learn this or learn that. I know how it is. I've done it. I've done it myself, whether it be when I was learning to code or in the 3D space or even cameras now. It's like, oh, a new camera. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got to get it. Oh, a new language. I got to learn this. Oh, this one's so good. In the early days of the web, in the 90s, when I started, I, start, I wrote my first commercial website in 94. It was even 94, early 95. I forget now. Anyway. When I wrote my very first website and I started developing web apps, they started off as dynamic database driven websites, pro CGI stuff as well. You had to chase new technology because the technologies back then, especially in early 90s, early 2000s, they were changing quite rapidly, quite rapidly. But since I would argue about 2014 to 15, even earlier, you could argue earlier, things have really settled down in terms of uh, web development, full stack front end, back end. As I've said in many videos, the only thing that's really changed much since then, I would say, is DevOps, which is simplifying, thank God, it got stupid, and um, server models, you know, AWS, Azure, that kind of stuff, VPS, that's great. So, yeah, I wouldn't be too concerned about jumping on to the next technologies. Why? Because they're pretty mature, right? It's like, what's the difference between a car made in 2015 and 2024? It's pretty marginal. It's pretty marginal. The difference between the vehicles, not that big. Same thing with software development. It's the differences between what we did then and now. It's extremely marginal. So I wouldn't be too concerned. All right, hope that helps. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. You can find me at unclesteph.com. I mentor people in the ways of code. I have solo courses where you can learn on your own and they're inexpensive. And my boot camp mentoring program is also a bargain relative to everybody else's. It's a unique program. And if you do decide to get into that, uh, you'll get all my courses that comes included plus a whole bunch more of it only that is only available to the mentoring program. I think, though, the most important aspect of it is we have bi-weekly live group coaching sessions. I'm always there. So it's your opportunity to ask questions, hear other people's questions, get involved in conversations. It's pretty good. That's the whole value of this thing. All right. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments about what I just discussed or anything else, if you have any criticisms about what I just discussed, let me know. I um, I haven't used Deno or Bun as well. Uh, I Last time I touched Node was years ago. Uh, I didn't like NPM. I didn't like the modules. I saw right away the, the, the huge uh, brittleness, the security issues vis-a-vis -vis the packages and modules and Node. So I said, I'm not in interested in this. This reminds me of PHP 2. So I said, I'm out of here. So in f all fairness to Node, though, I haven't looked at it in years. All right. Uh, this is a, a rebirth of the Coder in a Car series. I used to do this all the time. But due to evil COVID, I was uh, shut down. But whatever. So right now I'm in Westmount, which is a town adjacent to Montreal. And I'm heading down to the States too. So you're going to see me. If all goes according to plan. You're going to see me in different parts of the U.S. My ultimate destination is uh, Florida, South Florida. We'll see you there. See you guys. Bye.